Hey, good afternoon, Tabernacle family. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be with you again. And today is Thursday, April 2nd. We're in day two of our 30-day walk through the Psalms. And uh, our section today is uh, Psalm 6 through Psalm 10. And so as we come to Psalm 6, uh, we find David in verse number one saying, O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. Here we find the plea of a man who is loaded down with the guilt and the shame and the condemnation and the impending judgment that he is facing as a sinner. And of course, the Apostle Paul related those same thoughts to us in Romans 6 and 7. And in Romans 7, he said in verse number 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? We find that same note here in Psalm 6. The psalmist says, I'm weak. Uh, My bones are vexed. My soul is sore vexed. In verse number six, he says, I am weary. He speaks of his tears. In verse seven, he says, mine eye is consumed because of my grief. It waxeth old because of all mine enemies. Not only is he dealing with the guilt and the load of his sin, but he's dealing with uh, the hostility of those who hate him. And so he says in verse 8, Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my supplications. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all mine enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Here we have a man loaded with the guilt of his sin who calls on God and he finds mercy. Paul said in Romans 7, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. That's Romans 7, 24 and 25. He said, I'm wretched. I feel like David. But then he called on the Lord and the Lord heard his prayer. And he says in Romans 8 and verse 1, there is therefore now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Aren't you glad that, that there's no condemnation upon you if you know the Lord? His righteousness has been imputed to your account. The, the load, the guilt, the shame, the sentence of sin has been removed, and we've been made righteous in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a powerful psalm for us because we often deal with guilt and shame. Then we come to Psalm 7, and here David is dealing with a false accusation that has been made against him. Uh, The introduction of this psalm uh, says that this is a psalm that David sang unto the Lord concerning the words of Cush the Benjamite. Uh, Cush accused David of being disloyal to the king and trying to harm the king. And so David is pleading with the Lord concerning this false accusation that's been made against him. Oftentimes people think things of us that aren't true. They say things about us that aren't true. Uh, they They form opinions about us that are not true. And if we... If we find ourselves in in the wrong circumstances, uh, we we understand that that can have an impact on the direction of our lives. And we can become concerned about what people think about us because we don't want uh, our life to go in a direction that would not be uh, positive or one that would be harmful to us. We find that the psalmist, as he's concerned about that, in the midst of it, he cries out to the Lord. I'm glad that I can cast my burden on the Lord, knowing that he cares for me. And uh, in in Psalm 7 and verse 8, he says, The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just 
for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. Then he says this in verse 10, my defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Our defense is of the Lord, and we commit ourselves to him. He knows us. He knows the integrity of our heart. He also knows the sin in our lives. But if we know the Lord and we're seeking to serve him, no matter what things may be said of us or what opinions may be formed of us or what harm people want to do to us, we commit ourselves to the Lord. Then we come to Psalm 8, a wonderful psalm. And David asked the question here in verse 4, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? This is a psalm about the glory of God and the power of God and his creation. And in the midst of it all, David is overwhelmed with the thought that God cares for him as an individual and that God cares for you. I think about what he said in Psalm 139 and verse 17. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. And then in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And so we praise the Lord that we are on his mind, that he knows us, and that he cares about us. And then we come to Psalm 9 and Psalm 10, and really these two psalms are complementary psalms. They're prophetic psalms, and they speak of uh, the coming of the king, and they speak of the hostility that believers will face and God's people will face in the end days. And we see in Psalm 9, he says, I will praise thee, O Lord, verse 1, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name. What can we do right now? We can praise the Lord. In verse number 9, he says, The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Where do we run to in trouble? We run to the Lord. And we are so grateful that we can do that. He said in verse 10, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. God is with us. He cries out in verse 13, Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. And so we understand the hostility that we find in this world uh, is, is something that we can expect. And may God help us as we deal with it. And then we come to Psalm number 10. And uh, what a wonderful psalm it is. Uh, the psalmist says, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? In other words, here's the question. Lord, I'm dealing with trouble and I can't find you. Where are you, Lord? Help me. You ever feel that way? I'm going through it. I need some help, and I need the Lord, but I can't find him. I want you to know that God is with us. He cries out in verse 12, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked contemn God? He has said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. And then he says in verse 16, The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. He's looking forward to the time when King Jesus is ruling and uh, all of his enemies have been removed. That day's coming. We can look to the Lord. May God bless you today. I'm praying for you.